Greetings, fellow seekers of the unknown. Welcome to Paranormal M, where we delve into the most mysterious and unexplainable phenomena. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with our latest mind-boggling tales. We hope you enjoy the journey. My Personal Experience with an Entity When I was 14 years old, something terrifying happened to me that I'll never forget. I started hearing strange scratching noises above my bed in the middle of the night. The time was usually around 3.14 a.m., and it would always wake me up, and at first I just tried to ignore it and thought it was just some sounds of the house settling or rodents in the attic, but as time went on, the scratching became louder and more persistent. Around the same time, I began having eerie dreams about a dark entity that haunted me. It took on the form of a little girl or a jester, but I could never see it clearly. The dreams were terrifying, and they always left me feeling uneasy. I tried to brush them off as just nightmares, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. One night, I woke up to find the entity standing next to my bed. It was real, and I could feel its presence. When I sat up, it turned its head towards me, and I froze in fear. In a panic, I threw my sheets over its head and began punching wildly hoping to hit something, but when I looked up again, the entity had vanished, leaving me alone in my dark room. As time went on, the scratching and dreams eventually ceased, but the memory of that time still haunts me to this day. I can't help but wonder what sort of malevolent force was behind those occurrences. Was it all in my head, or was something truly haunting me? It wasn't until years later that I discovered the likely cause of these events, the scratching might have been caused by mice nestled under the roof, but the more unsettling event that happened years before this was that my little brother had been dabbling in the occult. He had used a site to learn how to make our house haunted, and had even used a Ouija board, which my dad had thrown away after he found out. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How could my own brother do something like that? The worst part was that during one of these Ouija sessions, my brother intentionally failed to say goodbye. And since the board was gone, we couldn't undo the damage. It's hard to shake the feeling that this was the true cause of the scratching and haunting dreams. To this day, I still wonder what sort of malevolent force my brother may have unleashed upon her home, and what it could be capable of. It's been years since those terrifying experiences, and I'm an adult now but the idea of those dreams still haunt me. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night feeling like I'm being watched, and I can't help but think back to that time. I've tried to talk to my brother about what he did, but he refuses to discuss it, and I can't help but wonder if he knows more than what he's letting on. Maybe he's afraid of what he's unleashed, or maybe he's just ashamed of what he's done. Either way, I know that those experiences have left a lasting impact on me. Even now, when I'm alone in my room at night, I can't help but feel like I'm not really alone. I'll never forget the scratching, the dreams, or the fear that came along with them. And I'll always wonder what sort of darkness my brother may have unleashed upon her home. White Orb Going Into Body Witness. During my sixth grade year, I had an experience that I'll never forget. One day as I was sitting in class, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. It was a small white orb that came in through the window and floated around the room for a few seconds before it came straight towards me. To my surprise, it entered my body and I was left feeling confused and disoriented. I thought I was just imagining things, but then I saw another girl in the room seemed to have seen the same thing. We made eye contact, but we both ignored it and continued about our day. The girl and I were in choir together, and we stood on the same row. Even though we never talked about it, I knew for a fact that she had seen the white orb too. Her expression was the same as mine, jaw dropped and confused. I couldn't explain what had happened, but I was glad that I wasn't the only one who had seen it. After the white orb merged with me, I remember feeling weird, but I can't exactly describe how it felt. It was such a strange experience that I forgot about it over time. 
until I came across someone else's story online that was similar to mine. That's when it all came back to me and I realized that what I had experienced was real. I often wonder if anyone else has ever witnessed something similar to what I saw that day. Have you? Have you ever seen something strange with someone else and never talked about it? It's amazing how something so bizarre can happen and thus just be forgotten about. But I'll always remember the day in sixth grade when the white orb merged with me and how it brought me closer to someone else who had experienced it too. My statue is breathing. As I lie in bed, I can't help but notice the imposing statue of Themis, the Greek goddess of justice, that stands outside of my window. In her hand, she holds a sword, while the other hand grips a balance, symbolizing her impartiality to delivering justice. I've always found the statue to be a comforting presence, a reminder that justice will always prevail. Tonight, however, as I prepare to sleep, I can't shake the feeling that something's off. I open my eyes one last time, and to my horror, I see that the statue seems to be moving. Her head is ever so slightly turning as if she's surveying her surroundings. Her arm that holds the sword sways gently as if it's grown tired of holding it up for so long. As I watch in disbelief, I see the statue seems to be breathing. The chest rises and falls in a steady rhythm, and even worse, it looks like she has a mouth that's moving, as if she's muttering to herself. I strain to hear what she's saying, but I can't make out the words. I feel a sudden surge of fear. What could be causing the statue to move like this? Is it some kind of malevolent spirit trying to frighten me? Or could it be that the goddess herself has come to life? I don't know anything about demons or spirits, and I'm not sure what to do. I try to calm myself down, telling myself that it's just my imagination playing tricks on me. Maybe I'm just tired and seeing things. But as I lie back down, I can see the statue is still moving. It's as if she's trying to communicate with me, to tell me something important. I decided to take a closer look to try and understand what was happening. I get out of bed and approach the statue slowly, trying not to make any sudden movements. As I get closer, I can see the statue is indeed breathing, but it's not a sign of life. It's just the wind blowing through the window and causing the statue to sway back and forth. Relieved, I let out a deep breath. I'm not crazy after all. It was just a trick of the light, a combination of shadows and wind that made the statue seem alive. I feel foolish for having been scared, but also grateful that I took the time to investigate. As I climbed back into bed, I glanced at the statue one last time. It's still swaying gently in the wind, but now I can see, for what it really is, a symbol of justice and fairness, an embodiment of the values that we should all strive to uphold. I close my eyes, feeling safe and secure, knowing that Themis will always be watching over me. Time slip. Teleport. What the hell? Back in 2010, I was a 25-year-old college student living with my incredibly supportive parents. My path to college was not conventional, having dropped out of high school and having two amazing children, but I was determined to make something of myself. It was an early autumn afternoon around 4 or 5 p.m., and I was in my room working on some homework on my trusty laptop seated at my desk. The desk faced the wall across from my bed, and my old-style box TV was on top of my dresser, to the left of my desk just two feet away. I was, as usual, procrastinating on my work, and had the TV in the background mindlessly watching some dumb show. Because my TV was so close, I stood up to change the volume, instead of using the remote, and then suddenly everything changed. It was as if a switch had flipped and my entire environment transformed. This experience still affects me to this day, and I can still feel it deep in my soul. Something strange happened, and 
and I know that it wasn't a hallucination or a dream. Suddenly, I was back in my childhood home, some 20 miles away, and seemingly 18 years in the past. I was standing in front of the only hallway closet in my one-bedroom house where I grew up. The house was over 100 years old, and the closet was one of those with sliding doors that always seemed to come off their tracks. The door to the closet was open, and my outstretched left arm was reaching for a distinct item. As a child, my mother had this cheap perfume bottle that I was absolutely in love with for some inexplicable reason. The bottle was made of glass and shaped like a bird, perhaps a dove with its wings up and outstretched. It was beautiful, but it had a broken wing. I probably broke it myself, being the curious and clumsy child that I was, and still am to be honest. And there I was, one moment in my somewhat modern bedroom in 2010, the next in the old one-bedroom hallway across town, and back in time, 18 years. I was there, I saw the bird bottle, and I was within inches of grabbing it. My heart melted for that dumb little bottle of stinky perfume shaped like a one-winged dove. And I swear, this is not a Fleetwood Mac song, as amusing as it may seem. But before my hand could make physical contact with that precious bird, the switch flipped again. And just like that, I was back in front of my TV, outstretched left hand and all. My mind was reeling and I felt sick and dizzy. I was in a state of shock and confusion and I had no idea what had just happened. I stumbled out of my room, down the hall, and into the living room before finally making it out into the front yard. I could do nothing but lurch over hands on my knees, trying desperately to catch my breath and my sanity. This experience was so jarring and so real. I was physically in front of that open closet, reaching for that damn burn bottle. And then I wasn't. I wasn't particularly stressed about classes. It was just community college after all. And I'm not prone to hallucinations, nor was I under the influence of anything or under any unusual stress at the time. I've only shared this experience with a few people, as the subject of momentarily teleporting through time and space doesn't come up in conversation often, and I only know a few people who feel comfortable with telling. To this day, I still have no explanation for what had happened to me. It might have just been a strange break in my psyche, or perhaps something unexplainable occurred. Whatever it was, it was not a dream, and it felt all too real to me. I've tried to rationalize the experience in my mind, but it defies all logic and explanation. It remains a mystery, one that I may never fully understand. It has left a lasting impression on me. And it's given me newfound appreciation for the mysteries of life. I've often wondered if anyone else has had a similar experience, if there are others out there that have felt the same inexplicable sensation of traveling through time and space, even if only for a moment. It is a curious thought, and one that I cannot help but ponder from time to time. In the years since that strange afternoon, I've completed my college degree and started a career in my chosen field. I'm grateful for the support of my parents who helped me through those difficult times and for the opportunities that have come my way since then. But I'll never forget the strange and inexplicable experience and the way it shook me to my core. It has become a part of my personal history, a moment that I will carry with me the rest of my life. Jin Dog Barking at Night As someone who's experienced sleep paralysis before, I know firsthand just how frightening it can be. But one particular night, I had an experience that was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. I remember waking up in the middle of the night completely paralyzed. My eyes were wide open, but I couldn't move a muscle. It was like I was trapped in my own body, unable to do anything but watch what was happening around me. As I lay there, feeling scared and confused, I heard a loud dog bark right next to my ear. At first, I thought it was my mind playing tricks on me, but then I heard it again, clear as day, and then a third time. The bark was so loud and so close that I could feel the vibrations in my ear. I was absolutely terrified. We don't have dogs in our house, and as a Muslim, I knew that it was highly unlikely that I would ever own one. So what could explain this mysterious barking that seemed to be coming from right next to me? The whole experience was incredibly eerie and unnerving. I lay there, unable to move as the barking continued to echo in my ears. 
It was as if the dog was right there in the room with me, but I couldn't see it, I could only hear it. After what felt like an eternity, the barking finally stopped. I was left lying there in the darkness, still unable to move. It was one of the scariest experiences of my life, and one that I'll never forget. To this day, I have no idea what caused the barking, or why it only happened that one time. But I do know that it was a terrifying experience that I hope to never have to go through ever again. My terrifying experience with the demon. I've been thinking about it for a while now, and I believe it's time to share my story. It's a true story that happened to me, and I'm here to tell all of it. I'm not trying to prove anything to skeptics or anyone else, I'm just sharing my experience. Those who have experienced anything similar to what I've experienced will understand that it's possible. Let me take you back to when I was 13 or 14 years old. I'm 21 now. I used to watch ghost shows for fun and entertainment, but I never believed that what I saw could actually happen to me. I believed it was possible, but I had my doubts. One night, I did something dumb. I was so curious about the existence of genies that I sat in prayer one night, and after finishing my prayer, I called out to Allah and asked him if genies were real and to let me have an experience of my own. I don't know why I asked for that. I know it was dumb, but I was curious, and this is where it all started. After making that prayer one night, while getting ready to sleep, I heard a woman say to me in a soft, soothing voice with an accent I'd never heard before, Go to sleep, sweetheart. It was as if she was right behind me, and at that moment I hadn't experienced anything like that before. I thought it was because I was tired. I fell asleep and woke up the next morning getting ready for school. I was putting on my clothes when something came up to my left ear and started speaking in this deep, guttural voice that no human man or woman could ever make. It was speaking in a language I'd never heard before in my entire life. In that moment, I didn't understand what was happening, and I was frozen in fear. It terrified me. All I know is that, as soon as it was done, I went to my mother in a panic and everyone was asking me what was wrong. After that incident, I started to feel something watching me, and I felt it more when I was alone. I was uncomfortable to be in my room alone. I always had this creepy, scary feeling at certain times in the night, almost as if it was a perfect opportunity for this thing to attack me. And one night, it was in one of those uncomfortable nights, so I lay in my bed listening to Quran with headphones. Suddenly, this thing came up to my ear again, and blocked the sound of the Quran playing in my ear. It was as if it completely muffled out my earphones. Then it began to speak in this deep, guttural voice in a language I couldn't understand. It freaked me out, and I was shaking and scared. One thing about me was that I stayed on my prayers, and I read and I listen to the Quran constantly. But if I ever missed my prayer, this thing would come for me. When I missed a prayer, it was almost like an opportunity for it to come after me. It hated prayer, and one time I stood and prayed in my own head and said, Alu Akbar, loudly, and this thing screamed no in a high-pitched voice. This jinn would also constantly growl during the night at the bottom of the stairs like an animal. Let me share with you the last three experiences I had with this jinn. One night, I went to my cousin's house, and the house was mainly full of female family members. The only male was a boy who wasn't older than the age of seven. And one night, I woke up while everyone was fast asleep. I could hear snores. I got up, went to the kitchen, and started preparing breakfast. I decided to make pancakes my favorite breakfast food. As I was mixing the batter, I realized I'd run out of eggs. I was annoyed because I didn't want to leave my house to go to the grocery store. However, I remembered that my neighbor, Mrs. Johnson, had some chickens in her backyard, and she often gave me fresh eggs. So I went over to her house and asked if she had any spare. When I knocked on the door, Miss Johnson greeted me warmly and invited me in. I explained my situation and she happily gave me a dozen eggs. As I was leaving, she reminded me that she was having a potluck later that day and invited me to join in the festivities. I accepted her invitation and told her that I'd bring some of my famous homemade salsa. After leaving her house, I went back to my kitchen and finished making pancakes. 
They turned out perfectly golden brown, and I served them with a side of fresh fruit and some syrup. I sat down at the table and enjoyed my delicious breakfast. Later that day, I went to the potluck at Mrs. Johnson's house. She had a beautiful garden, and she had decorated her backyard with flowers and balloons. There were lots of people there, and I recognized many of them from the neighborhood. I brought my homemade salsa, and everyone raved about how delicious it was. We all sat together at the long table enjoying the food and conversation, and I learned that one of the guests was a retired astronaut who had been in space several times. He shared some amazing stories about his experiences, and we all listened in awe. As the sun began to set, the party wound down, and people started to say their goodbyes. I helped Mrs. Johnson clean up, and we chatted for a while longer. She told me about her grandchildren and how much she loved spending time with them. After saying goodbye to Mrs. Johnson, I walked back to my house, feeling grateful for the wonderful day that I'd had. I reflected on how lucky I was to have such a great neighbor to live in such a friendly and welcoming community. And as I walked into my house, I felt content and happy, ready to relax and enjoy the rest of my day. Alu Akbar, loudly, and this thing screamed no in a high-pitched voice. This jinn would also constantly growl during the night at the bottom of the stairs like an animal. Let me share with you the last three experiences I had with this jinn. One night, I went to my cousin's house, and the house was mainly full of female family members. The only male was a boy who wasn't older than the age of seven. And one night, I woke up while everyone was fast asleep. I could hear snores. I got up, went to the kitchen, and started preparing breakfast. I decided to make pancakes, my favorite breakfast food. As I was mixing the batter, I realized I'd run out of eggs. I was annoyed because I didn't want to leave my house to go to the grocery store. However, I remembered that my neighbor, Mrs. Johnson, had some chickens in her backyard, and she often gave me fresh eggs. So I went over to her house and asked if she had any spare. When I knocked on the door, Miss Johnson greeted me warmly and invited me in. I explained my situation and she happily gave me a dozen eggs. As I was leaving, she reminded me that she was having a potluck later that day and invited me to join in the festivities. I accepted her invitation and told her that I'd bring some of my famous homemade salsa. After leaving her house, I went back to my kitchen and finished making pancakes. They turned out perfectly golden brown and I served them with a side of fresh fruit and some syrup. I sat down at the table and enjoyed my delicious breakfast. Later that day, I went to the potluck at Mrs. Johnson's house. She had a beautiful garden, and she had decorated her backyard with flowers and balloons. There were lots of people there, and I recognized many of them from the neighborhood. I brought my homemade salsa, and everyone raved about how delicious it was. We all sat together at the long table enjoying the food and conversation, and I learned that one of the guests was a retired astronaut who had been in space several times. He shared some amazing stories about his experiences, and we all listened in awe. As the sun began to set, the party wound down, and people started to say their goodbyes. I helped Mrs. Johnson clean up, and we chatted for a while longer. She told me about her grandchildren, and how much she loved spending time with them. After saying goodbye to Mrs. Johnson, I walked back to my house, feeling grateful for the wonderful day that I'd had. I reflected on how lucky I was to have such a great neighbor to live in such a friendly and welcoming community. And as I walked into my house, I felt content and happy, ready to relax and enjoy the rest of my day. Gregorian chants heard through brown noise. For the past four years, I've been going through an incredibly intense spiritual experience that's left me feeling both amazed and bewildered. During this time, I've discovered that I have the ability to hear what's going on around me through different types of sound frequencies. It's a strange and fascinating phenomenon, one that I can only describe as being truly otherworldly. One of the most striking experiences I've had is hearing Gregorian chants while listening to brown noise on a speaker and headphones. The sound was incredibly clear and powerful, and it felt like I was being transported into another realm entirely. The chanting was unlike anything I'd ever heard before. It was both haunting and beautiful at the same time. It was a truly awe-inspiring experience, and one that I'll never forget. But that's not the only thing I've heard. There are other sound frequencies that allow me to hear different things that are going on spiritually. For example, 
There's one that lets me hear a deep, dark breathing. It's a sound that's both terrifying and intriguing all at once. And then there are others that let me hear screams and other things that sound as if they're on some sort of a loop. It's hard to describe exactly what I'm hearing, but it's definitely not of this world. I'm constantly amazed by what I'm experiencing, but I'm also a little bit scared. I don't really know what's going on or why it's happening to me. All I know is that it's something beyond my own comprehension, something that's both thrilling and terrifying at the same time. If anyone else out there has experienced anything like this, I'd love to hear from you. I'm trying to make sense of this crazy spiritual journey I'm on, and any information or insight would be greatly appreciated. This is a strange and wondrous world we live in, and I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of what's out there. Scratches, door slamming, and knocks. As a student, I don't spend much time at home during weekdays, but when I've been there, I've had some less than pleasant experiences. It all started on a Saturday or Sunday when my mom, dad, and sister and I were all hanging out playing board games downstairs. That's when we heard what sounded like footsteps upstairs. Our house is old and the floorboards are very creaky, but we were all downstairs. We looked at each other puzzled, but we wrote it off to being one of our dogs and continued playing. That is, until we put away our dogs and kennels downstairs and once again, we heard footsteps. My dad, who was reluctant to go upstairs, went to check if anyone was up there. He came downstairs with a I told you so look on his face, but that all changed when we heard three door slams as hard as they could be slammed in a row coming from upstairs. My dad grabbed a shotgun from the case and went up to the stairs to clear the house, but he found no one. A couple of days went by and I was walking in the house after coming back from school when I heard three loud knocks on the window at ground level. It wasn't too out of the ordinary and I figured my dad was saying hi, so I waved behind me and continued inside. When I asked my dad about it, he turned pale and said the same thing it had been happening to him. At first, I tried to write it off, but when my mom and sister came home and asked us what we were talking about, we told them. And to our surprise, they said they had experienced the same things. Nevertheless, we were already freaked out. Just a few nights later, I was laying in my room when my dad was working in his office. My mom was reading in their bedroom. My sister was doing laundry. And suddenly, we all heard scratches on our doors. And we all knew we heard it at the same time because we all opened our doors to see what it was. We all pointed fingers until we heard the door from outside open, slam, and then another again. When we checked, the door was wide open, and as we all stood there in shock, we heard something shatter in the other room. My mom and sister bolted out of the door, and I tried to follow, but my dad held me back. We checked the other room to see a shattered mirror. As I turned around to get the fuck out of there, I heard my dad say, and I quote, Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Suddenly, he saw a tall, shadowy figure in the corner of the room waving at him. Of course, we were all freaked out and we planned to try and sell the house. The weird part about this, besides the paranormal factors, is that we've lived in this home for 10 years without anything happening to us. So why now? That's the question that still haunts us to this day. My two-year-old niece sees my uncle, who died from an overdose in 2012. I've always been fascinated by the paranormal, and it's all thanks to my mother's own experiences with it. Ever since I was young, she would tell me stories of things that couldn't be explained, and I was always eager to hear more. One story in particular stayed with me all these years, and it involves my uncle Jim, who died of a heroin overdose when he was just 25 or 26 years old. When I was about 12 years old, my two-year-old niece saw a photo of my uncle holding my older sister when she was born. To everyone's surprise, my niece looked at the photo and said, Jim, I wasn't there when this happened, but my mother explained it to me. It was a chilling moment, and it only became more intense when my mother asked my niece where Jim was. My niece pointed at the closet. 
As my mother recounted the story to me over FaceTime, I felt my whole body tingle with excitement and anticipation. It was like something was stirring within me, something that I couldn't quite explain. And then when my mother asked my niece to say Jim again, she did, and this time even more clearly than before. It was as if my uncle was reaching out to us from beyond the grave. It was a powerful and emotional experience. After I hung up with my mother, the tingling sensation persisted, and I found myself weeping uncontrollably. I pleaded to see my Uncle Jim. I was just a child when he passed away, and I never really had the chance to know him, but now, with this strange and mysterious experience, I felt like I was somehow connected to him in a way I couldn't explain. I've always been curious about the paranormal, and this experience has only intensified my fascination. I can't help but wonder if anyone else out there has had a similar experience, whether it's with a loved one who's passed away or something else entirely. It's a strange and mysterious world we live in, and I feel like it's only just scratching the surface of what's out there, but I'm excited to explore it further and see where this journey takes me. A UFO sighting when I was young. I have a vivid memory of a UFO sighting that occurred when I was very young, not over the age of 12. It was just me and my mother waiting for the bus, and as we were standing there, I looked up into the sky and saw a small blue light flying slowly. I was excited for whatever reason and said to my mom, Look! She dismissed it, saying it was probably just a normal airplane or a helicopter. But then something strange happened. The light dot in the sky splintered into three parts, and suddenly there were three dots flying side by side at the same speed. I was in awe of the sight before me, and I kept urging my mother to look up and see what was happening. But she had no answer for this phenomenon, and told me to get back up on the bus because the doors were just opening. As I got into the bus, I kept looking back at the sky, trying to keep an eye on the strange objects that I just witnessed. But eventually I lost sight of them, and I was left with so many questions. What were those lights? Why did they split into three? And why had my mother been unable to explain it all to me? Over the years, I've thought about the sightings many times, wondering if anyone else had seen it, or if there was an explanation for what I had witnessed. I've tried to rationalize it in my mind, but it defies all explanation. Despite the passage of time, the memory has stayed with me, a strange and unexplained event that left me with a fascination of the mysteries of the universe. While I may never know what those lights were or where they came from, I'll always remember the feeling of wonder and amazement as I felt as a young child, looking up at the sky and seeing something that defied all explanation. Something really weird happened last night. I hope I'm not going crazy. As I lay in my bed trying to fall asleep, I realized I was parched and needed a drink of water. Checking the time, I saw it was around one in the morning. With a sigh, I got up and made my way to the staircase, cautiously descending each step, trying to make as little noise as possible. As I reached the bottom of the stairs, I noticed that all the lights were off, casting an eerie shadow over the house. As I rounded the corners into the kitchen, something strange happened. Out of nowhere, I hear a child's voice singing Old MacDonald in a loud, clear voice. It was so loud that it startled me, but not too loud that it would wake anyone else up in the house. Frozen with fear, I stood in the kitchen for what felt like an eternity, waiting for the song to stop. But it continued on and on, and the child's voice was ringing in my ears. Eventually, I mustered up the courage to slowly make my way upstairs still able to faintly hear the song in the background. Once I reached my room, I turned off my fan to see if I could still hear the song more clearly. To my surprise, the singing stopped. This made me even more frightened, wondering where the sound could have possibly came from. Feeling paranoid and scared, I locked my door and tried my best to go to sleep, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't quite right. It was as if the song had somehow taken on a life of its own, haunting me with each note. I tossed and turned all night, the memory of the singing child's voice still echoing in my mind. A 
Sometimes it sounds like my door is being punched. I've been experiencing something strange in my house lately. It's hard to explain, but sometimes it feels like someone or something is punching my door. It's not a forceful punch, more like a bump or a knock. The weirdest part is that it happens randomly, even when I'm home alone. I've tried to rationalize it by thinking maybe it's just the house settling or the wind, but it doesn't seem to fit. What's even more unsettling is that it's not just the door. I've noticed stacks of things falling without explanation as well. I can't help but feel like something's watching me from the corner of my eye. It's always just out of sight, and when I turn to look, there's nothing there. It started to make me feel uneasy in my own home. I've tried to investigate by checking for drafts or loose floorboards, but I can't seem to find anything that could explain these occurrences. But the knocking still persists. It's hard to explain, but I can't shake the feeling that it's something paranormal. Maybe there's a ghost or a spirit in my house. It's a scary thought, but it's the only explanation that seems to fit. I'm not sure what to do at this point. I've started to lock my bedroom door at night just in case. I don't want to take any chances with whatever is causing this. If anyone has any advice or had a similar experience, please let me know. I'm starting to feel like I'm losing my mind. Probably hallucinations or something. As a young child, I had a recurring experience with a shadowy figure that haunted my dreams. It was always the same size as me and made a terrifying moaning and screaming noise that sounded like a broken radio mixed with an angry cat, a zombie's uh, and a low tone of an angry goat. The scream would startle me awake, and when I pulled my head out from under my blanket, I would see the shadow figure looming over me. It was dark as night, with two gaping holes for eyes, and a large, deep, and seemingly endless mouth. The creature had a spike on top of its head that added to its menacing appearance. Every time this happened, I would scream until my father would come and pick me up and take me to sleep in his and my mom's bed. Even then, the shadow creature would follow us. My father would tell me to be brave and to not turn on the light. So we would lay in the dark, listening to the creature scream until I finally fell asleep. I didn't see the shadow creature again until I was 16 years old. When I told my father about it, he confirmed that he had seen it too. I was skeptical, so I asked him to draw a picture of the creature in another room while I drew it in mine. When we compared our drawings, they were eerily similar, except for a few minor details. This realization scared me, but my father had no more information than I did. I later learned about the concept of shadow people, but this creature was different from what I had read about. It was my size when I was about five years old, and it would continue to visit me during moments of shock and anxiety attacks as I grew older. Recently I came across an image that looked similar to the creature, but I couldn't find any information on when I searched it online. It's been several years since I last encountered the shadow creature, but I still have questions. Unfortunately, my father passed away seven years ago, and I'm the only one who's ever seen it. If anyone else has experienced something similar, I'd love to hear about it and finally find some answers. Something that happened when I was 12. When I was 12 years old, my family and I moved into my grandpa's place after he passed away. It was a big change for us because before that, we had been living in a trailer, and I had to share my room with my brother, but now I finally got my own room and I was pretty excited about it. At first everything seemed calm and happy, but that all changed when I started seeing things. I can remember the first time I saw something. I was in my room, and everyone else was outside grilling and cooking. Suddenly, I saw the legs of a ghost walk into my mom and dad's bathroom. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but I knew I had seen something. The next experience was even more terrifying. It was a slender man type experience. One night, a few days after my first encounter, I was lying in bed trying to sleep. It was pretty calm and chill until a figure started flashing in and out of my existence in front of me. 
At first, I thought it was just my imagination, but it kept happening. It was getting more and more intense. It wasn't sleep paralysis because I got up multiple times out of fear. I was fully aware of my surroundings and just knew that I was awake. I tried turning on the TV to distract myself, but that didn't help. The figure was still there, flashing in and out of existence. It got so bad throughout the night that I couldn't sleep at all. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. I had never experienced anything like this before, and I didn't know who to talk to about it. I was too scared to tell my parents because I didn't want them to think I was crazy. But the experiences didn't stop. As time went on, I started to see more and more strange things in the house. I saw shadows moving on their own and heard strange noises coming from empty rooms. It was like the house was alive with some kind of energy. I couldn't explain it. Looking back, I don't know what to make of those experiences. Maybe it was just my imagination running wild, or maybe there was something more going on in the house. All I know is that those experiences have stayed with me all these years, and I still get chills thinking about them. I think I'm being stalked by a ghost or a paranormal entity, specifically located in my room. Advice? I cannot begin to describe the fear and unease that has been plaguing me for what seems like an eternity. I can't even remember when it started. But one day I just had this gut-wrenching feeling that someone or something was lurking in the closet of my room. The feeling was so intense that I'd break out in a cold sweat and my heart would race uncontrollably. During those days, some nights were particularly hostile, and the presence that I couldn't see would be overwhelmingly terrifying. I tried to ignore it, but it was always there, watching, waiting, and menacingly silent. I started and closed the closet door before going to bed, hoping that it would somehow keep whatever it was in there from harming me. But the next morning, without fail, the closet door would be wide open again. This went on for over a year, and every night, I would be trapped in a cycle of fear, anxiety, and helplessness. Finally, one day, the door remained closed and the terror from the closet vanished. But the problem only shifted, and now I feel like I'm not alone in my main room. I can feel it, an ominous presence that I can't see, but I know it's there, always watching and waiting for me. To make matters worse, I started experiencing sleep paralysis, something that never happened to me before. The fear is so intense that I'm terrified to sleep. Every time I switch off the lights or get too uncomfortable, feel like something's watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I've tried to reach out to people for help, but to my disappointment, they accuse me of being insane or schizophrenic, without even bothering to know me or understand what I'm going through. It's frustrating and disheartening, but I refuse to give up. Please, if you have any ideas what this entity is or how I can get rid of it, I'd appreciate any help that you can offer. I'm at my wit's end and I don't know how much longer I can take this torment. Experience of a spirit actually interacting with me at a haunted holiday retreat. Let me tell you about a time I stayed at the Mermaid Inn with my partner's family. It's a 600 year old lodge located in the countryside with next to no signal and poor internet connection. Despite its reputation for being haunted, I didn't think much of it, just assuming it was a rumor to add some excitement to the place. When we first arrived, I was thrilled to have my own room, since I used to share one with my brother back when we lived in a trailer. We settled into a room above the bar, but it was too noisy for our child, so we moved into room 12. The only available one at the time. The night passed without any incidents, and I felt calm and happy. However, the second night was a completely different story. It was a night that I'll never forget. It made me believe in the afterlife, without a doubt. I always struggle to sleep in silence, so I played white noise on my phone to help me relax. The phone was next to my bedside, and my partner's phone was on his side. It took me around an hour to fall asleep, but I kept hearing tapping on the side of the wardrobe and other parts of the room. The noise was keeping me awake, but I 
thought it would eventually stop. At around 3.27 a.m., the white noise stopped abruptly on my partner's phone, which made me jump. My phone then made three pulses of static, followed by a decrease in volume, and my partner's phone didn't come back on. I knew then that something wasn't right, and it was only going to get worse. I fixed the white noise on each phone and tried to go back to sleep. However, the tapping noise continued, and the white noise dimmed down each time it happened. It was happening randomly, and there was no pattern to it. That night, my little girl slept with us, and there were two empty bunk beds next to me on my side. I heard a creaky noise that sounded like someone sat in the bottom bunk, and then the noise of the mattress springs as it got up. Once again, the white noise dimmed down after the noise, and I sat up and said, Please stop now, I'm trying to sleep, and you're making so much noise, you win, I'll keep it at that volume. As soon as I said this, the hangers inside the wardrobe started moving. My partner sat up and asked me if I heard it, and I confirmed that I did. The wardrobe in the room wasn't big, and it was made of wood, which made it echoey. The spirit then started using a hanger, hung up and bang against the back of the wardrobe, and the banging continued for a while. I eventually said, Please just let me sleep, it's nearly 4.30 a.m. Then it made a loud bang, and I turned to my partner, who was scared and turned on the light. Despite his fear, I told him that he couldn't deny how cool it was, because this was solid proof that the afterlife exists. I said that it was a 600-year-old building, and the spirits had probably been there for a long time. Suddenly, the movement around the room intensified, and I felt the end of my pillow being pushed down. I opened my eyes and saw a literal print being created on the pillow, getting bigger with each added pressure. I was freaked out and I threw my pillow across the room saying, no, don't even get close again. The movements continued but I eventually fell asleep. The days after I started hearing the noises earlier, but we were going to bed rather late and sleeping more heavily due to drinking, so I wasn't able to make myself aware of them. However, no one no one believed me at all about what had happened except for my partner, who had been a witness to the strange fence. I couldn't help but think back to the experience and try to make sense of it all. I swear I wasn't exaggerating about what happened that night. It felt like a really interactive experience with a spirit, constantly going back and forth with the noise volume like it was just some sort of game to them. The entity seemed to be getting more confident with the noises and making louder ones, doing them after I spoke, getting closer. I didn't get bad vibes, just mischievous ones. Maybe a bit manipulative, but I could be wrong. I experienced a seriously evil entity as a child that scarred and yanked my covers, leaving a very cold handprint on me. I've also experienced what felt like drops of water coming down on me, a warm handprint and a very comforting, loving energy shortly after my granddad died. I could go on about my experiences and I've seen apparitions, took a picture with a woman in a dress smiling behind me, and seen so much stuff, but that was only a shared experience. It was multiple encounters within a short span. My hair didn't stand up like it usually does, but the day after I began feeling a bit strange about the room. Anyway, it's super cool though, and I hope nothing has attached itself to me or anyone else, and that they're all doing is just messing around with me. Currently wondering, what is making the dogs bark when I don't have dogs? I'm currently visiting my family in the rural parts of Alabama, and I'm staying on a 20-acre farm with my loved ones, some horses, a barn cat, and a few other animals. The farm is completely surrounded by thick trees, making it feel secluded and far away from the hustle and bustle of the city. However, something strange is happening tonight that has kept me up and on edge. About five minutes ago, I heard a dog barking incessantly outside, and it sounded like it was very close, if not from within the farm. The nearest neighbor is about half a mile away, and they don't even have dogs. The second closest neighbor is a mile away, on the same side of the highway, but separate by a quarter mile of trees. The dog won't stop barking, and it's starting to get on my nerves. As soon as I heard the dog start barking, the hairs on my neck and my arms stood up, a strange gut feeling that something was not right. 
My initial instinct was to go and investigate the source of the barking, but something inside of me told me not to go. I can hear the dog barking even now, almost outside my loft window, and it's giving me the creeps. I can't help but wonder, what is causing this incessant barking? Is it really a dog, or is it something else entirely? The thought of it being something other than a dog makes my heart race and my palms sweat. Could it be a wild animal lurking outside, or something even more sinister? I don't know what to do or what to think, but one thing is for sure. I won't be getting any much sleep tonight. How could this be possible? I was only about four years old, which would make it about 50 years ago. My family was camping somewhere in the southwestern U.S. or maybe northern Mexico. It was a typical camping trip. We set up camp, my dad and sister went to explore, and my mother went to go get water to boil from the nearby creek or river. I was left sitting on the picnic table, playing with my doll or something, cross-legged and content. That's when something strange happened. I felt like I was rising up, but my legs stayed in the cross-legged position. I looked down and saw the picnic table a few feet below me, and I realized that I was floating in midair. I wasn't freaked out, though in fact I felt pretty happy and curious about it. Like it was just another fun and new experience to add to my four years of life. I didn't feel anything holding me up and I sensed no presence around me. Everything was quite still and I felt very content. I took in my surroundings, enjoying the feeling of the sun on my skin and the breeze blowing through my hair. I even heard insects buzzing around me. It was like I was in my own little world, disconnected from everything around me. I didn't want it to end. But then I heard my mother coming back to camp, and I knew that my floating adventure was over. I gently came back down to the picnic table and hopped off, running to tell my mom what had just happened. Of course she didn't believe me. She probably thought I was just playing around, but I knew what had happened, and it was a memory that'll stay with me for the rest of my life never experienced anything like that again, and I still have no explanation for what had happened. Sometimes I wonder if it was all just a dream or my imagination playing tricks on me, but I know what I felt and what I saw, and I'll never forget the feeling of weightlessness and contentment that I experienced on that day. There's something in her attic. I live on a four-level traditional European house with my family and our flat is situated just below an old woman's home and the attic. The woman is almost 90 years old and can barely walk. So I was understandably frightened when my brother and I started hearing someone running up and down her flat in the middle of the night. At first, I dismissed it as her being mentally ill and forgot about it. Recently, I spoke to my mother about the incident, and she shared that she hears the same noises too. However, her room's on the other side, or flat, and it's impossible for her to hear the old lady's footsteps. Instead, she hears the sounds coming from the attic. The creepy part, the noise had been going on for years, and even her neighbors living below the attic have complained about it. We regularly clean the basement and lock it up during the night, so it can't be a homeless person sneaking in. Besides, the footsteps are too loud to be from an animal or some other thing, so what else could it be? My parents also told me a spooky story from seven or eight years ago when they found all their books in the living room dropped in the middle of the room. It gave me goosebumps just hearing about it. I've decided to speak to my dad about this and try to place cameras around the house to get a good look at this ghost or thing. It's unsettling living in a house where you hear unexplained noises regularly, but I'm curious to find out what's causing it. Evil Encounter at the Edinburgh Vaults in 2009, my family and I traveled to Edinburgh for our summer holiday. We decided to go to a ghost tour of the Edinburgh vaults one evening. It was my two older brothers, my mother, my father, a retired policeman, and I, who was a seven-year-old boy at the time. My dad was the biggest skeptic you could ever meet, and he laughed off anything to do with ghosts or the paranormal. The Edinburgh vaults were a maze of old vaults built in the late 1700s located underground. They were created as a solution to the overpopulated city at the time. The poor were made to live there in these vaults as they had no other options. Many people fell ill here and died due to the damp, wet conditions. During the first half of the tour, we took pictures and looked for orbs, and nothing too out of the ordinary happened. 
Then we all gathered in a room named Mr. Boots' room, which is said to be haunted by a dark, malevolent spirit. And that's when things got weird. My dad distinctly remembers smelling one of the foulest smells he's ever encountered in his life. He said it came to him in just one inhale and then disappeared. He even remembers his nose burning from this ghastly smell that only lingered for a few moments. Not one other person in the room encountered this smell other than my dad, and it was a small vault with low ceilings. After the tour, we returned to our hotel room to get ready for bed. My dad remembers feeling a burning sensation on his back, and my mother noticed that his back was covered in three distinct scratches, like a claw mark of three fingers. The scratch was about eight inches long. We were all pretty alarmed as to what could have done this. By morning, the scratch had disappeared. We couldn't explain what had happened, and my dad began to wonder if it was a demonic encounter. The experience shook us all up, and we never forgot that trip to Edinburgh and the haunted vaults. Strange moment at school. Today at school, I experienced some strange happenings that left me feeling quite unnerved. A friend of mine had taken a test earlier than the rest of our classmates, so he was assigned a small study room to work in. Since I had no classes at the time, I decided to keep him company for the hour. At around 11.10, just a few minutes before I was about to leave, something bizarre occurred. My phone assistant suddenly started to read out loud the Wikipedia page on angels. I found this to be quite odd and mentioned it to my friend. However, what happened next is even stranger. As I opened the door to leave the room, the lights began to flicker. I've never seen anything like this in that room before. What really creeps me out is that I turned off all the sounds on my phone and yet my phone assistant still went off. Additionally, the number 111 is considered to be an angel number, which made the situation even more eerie. What's more, my friend and I weren't even discussing anything related to angels or religion at the time. Before I opened the door, I had jokingly mentioned that maybe an angel was trying to give us a sign, but there was no one near the light switch at the time when the flickering occurred. I can't help but feel uneasy about this whole situation. The fact that we were in a small, secluded room only adds to the mysteriousness of it all. I'm not sure what to make of it but I can't shake the feeling that something otherworldly might have been at play. I've never been the one to believe in ghosts or paranormal activity, but after today, I'm starting to think there might be more to this world than meets the eye. All right, at this point, I think I'm crazy. I think my house may be a little haunted if I'm being honest. I never believed in ghosts or paranormal activities until today. My family's been experiencing strange occurrences in our home. They claim to have seen someone standing in the doorway when they're alone and not looking. At first, I shrugged it off as their imagination or coincidence, but that all changed this morning. Last night was exhausting, so I slept in late. Suddenly, I was awakened by a noise at my door. I thought it was my mom waking me up, so I lazily looked up to see her. However, to my surprise, she wasn't there. I rubbed my eyes and tried to focus on the figure in front of me, but I couldn't see a face. As soon as I realized that, the figure pulled away from the door quickly. I was confused and scared. I got out of bed and started calling for my mom, but there was no answer. I searched the house, but nobody was home for an hour. Was, I wasn't just a little freaked out. I was terrified. I had never experienced anything like this before. The thought of a ghostly figure standing in my doorway was haunting me. I couldn't shake the feeling of fear and unease. I decided to tell my mom about what had happened, and she seemed to believe me. Now, I'm starting to think that there might be something paranormal going on in her house. It's hard to believe, but after what I experienced, I can't deny the possibility. I'm anxious and scared about what might happen next, and I hope that... That was maybe just a one-time thing, and that it won't ever happen again. But deep down, I have a feeling that this is just the beginning of a very long and scary journey. Number 
newbie this week sharing first experiences. Looking back on my childhood experiences, I've come to realize that I've had several encounters with the paranormal. One of my earliest memories was in 1977 when I was only 10 years old. I vividly remember hearing my deceased grandmother's voice speaking to me, either from across the room or directly into my ear. And this went on for decades, and I always felt comforted by her presence. In 2004, my grandfather passed away, and I could feel his presence in the kitchen for months afterwards. His favorite hobby was cooking, and I think he was curious to see what I was making. Sometimes I could even smell his old spice aftershave, which was a comforting reminder of him. When I was 11, my family and I were shopping in a small hardware store. We all separated to look at different things, and that's when a tall man appeared in front of me. He had haunted eyes, and he was frantic, asking me where his son was. I had been taught not to speak with strangers, so I was hesitant to say anything. But then he sadly nodded, and in that moment, he dissolved right in front of my eyes. It was a surreal experience and one that stayed with me for years. These are just a few highlights from my 50 plus years of life, and I knew that there had been many more encounters with the paranormal. It's not always easy to talk about, but I'm glad to have these experiences and to know that there's something beyond this physical world.